our last reading, Paul instructed, so concluded, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We noted that rather than mere physical need ministry, this actually placed a premium on ministering to the spiritual needs, being sure that we pass the baton of the faith, but physical needs obviously are to be addressed as well. Today we continue as Paul begins to close out this epistle to the Galatians with personal notes and instruction. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Galatians 6 verses 11 to 13. Let's look this over. Point number 1. Paul has mentioned eyes several times in this Galatian epistle, having first mentioned their own eyes, saying, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Galatians 3 verse 1. Then again in Galatians 4 verse 15 mentioning their own eyes, For I bear you record, that, if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes, and have given them to me. And now he notes something about how large a letter he has written as he is at this point is writing with his own hand, likely due to his eyesight issues. Point number two. With this personal comment made, Paul turns back to the false teaching of them of the circumcision. He notes of them, as many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, again making a clear link between attempted law of circumcision obedience as actions that are of the flesh. Point number three. And remember, Paul had just noted, now the works of the flesh are manifest, then giving a long laundry list of such works. With it a given that works of the law are equal to works of the flesh, Paul essentially questions why the Galatian believers would allow the circumcision to even suggest that they seek this path. Point number four. Continuing in his comments of those of the circumcision, stating that they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So not only were they of the circumcision preaching the teaching law obedience and circumcision of the flesh, there was actually persecution for those that instead rested in the finished work of Christ at the cross, and thus that refused to be constrained. Point number five. Of them of the circumcision, Paul concludes, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. This is said, remembering the words of Peter at the Acts 15 Jerusalem Council, where he said of pressuring Gentiles to keep the Mosaic law, now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Acts 15 verse 10. Point number 6. Essentially, the twelve and leadership of the Jerusalem Kingdom Church had concluded that the new covenant empowerment, Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34, to be able to live under the law had long since been realized as not available at this time so none could live up to its requirements. So, with this as a given, Paul concludes of the circumcision that they only desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Believer recognized that Israel's new covenant did not come due to their rejection of Messiah. In fact, the body of Christ has something so much better than the new covenant as we live under grace, not law. Further, as with the Galatians, any who push Israel's kingdom to a new covenant on the body of Christ are ultimately only wanting to glory in your flesh.